Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Welcome po sa ating Sunday service ngayong umaga. To start our service, let's open our worship with a prayer. Lord, maraming salamat po sa umagang ito. Salamat po for giving us this opportunity again to worship you, to praise you, to give thanks, to glorify your name, and to listen to your word. Lord, I pray na sa lahat po ng nakakanood ng uh, service na ito, nawa po ngayong araw na ito ay mabless po sila. Uh, puspusin, mo sa, puspusin mo sila ng inyong Spiritus Santo, Lord. And I pray na mag, yung protection sa bawat isa, sa health ng bawat isa, I pray na kayo po ang mag po sa amin, Lord. We thank you and we bring back all the glory and praise to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tunay nga na ang kasiyahan ay nasa bawat isa, kaya kantahin po natin ang Happy Day. Happy day 
since you washed our sins away and we will never be the same Lord maraming salamat dahil meron kaming kalayaan na papurihan ka na tawagin ang pangalan mo at pasalamatan ka sa inyong harapan Lord we thank you Lord for being the same yesterday, today and tomorrow thank you for that assurance Lord and as we praise you and as we glorify you May we continually remember your goodness, your love for us. Nothing can stand against What a powerful name 
name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus Hallelujah maraming salamat po sa umagang ito Lord maraming salamat dahil alam namin how powerful your name is Lord you have no rival you have no equal Lord and you will reign forever maraming salamat for that assurance we thank you and we glorify you we praise your name in Jesus name we pray Magandang umaga, magandang hapon, at magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat kung saan po kayo nakikinig. Um, tunay na nga na even during this pandemic, hindi mapipigilan ang pagkilos ng banal na spirito. The Holy Spirit can't be stopped. Uh, buti na lang meron tayong technology where we are able to use this as means to share to other people. So, papasalamat ako kay Pastor. Uh, Arnel na binigyan niya ako tong opportunity na to na mag-share sa inyo sa mga uh, brothers and sisters, tita, tito, lolo, lola, mga ating ko dyan sa Baguio, miss na miss ko na kayo and I'm glad na through this avenue I'm able to still share sa inyo yung message ni Lord na inimpress niya sa akin. So bago po tayo mag-start sa ating um, message or sa sermon natin for today, uh, Inaanyayahan ko po kayo na samahan ako sa panalangin. Yes, Heavenly Father, thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity for me to be used, Lord, as mouthpiece to share your word to my brothers and sisters. Father, uh, anoint me with the Holy Spirit that every word that comes out from my mouth speak your message and your a fresh revelation for your people. Lord, May you open the hearts and minds of all those people na nakikinig ngayon. Uh, may they become receptive of your word. Make their hearts a fertile soil that each word that will be planted in their hearts would grow and bloom um, and it would manifest in their lives. Again, Lord, salamat po sa inyong mga salita. Salamat po sa technology na meron kami that even during this time, we are still able to be Um, even that we are separated, we are still able to gather as brothers and sisters to fellowship and to study your word together. We give you back glory, praises, and honor. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. So, um, ngayong pandemic, alam ko, madami sa atin yung nalulungkot. Uh, madami, syempre, lalo na yung mga naapektuhan ng um, ng virus, merong kamag-anak or loved one na going through um, tough times. And I think one of the trait po ng mga Pilipino that I really admire that has helped us during this time compared to other nations is tayo pong mga Pilipino masayahin. No? So kapag makikita po natin sa Facebook, sa social media, Parang lahat ng bagay, kahit bumabagyo na, makikita mo, nakangiti pa rin tayo. And we can make certain things into a joke. Parang ganyan po. So, minsan syempre may bad side yon Pero in the good side, at least nagagamit natin tong avenue natin to na pagiging masayahin. To be able to, you know, lift our spirits up. Especially, sabi nga nila, laughter is the best medicine. And naniniwala talaga ako doon na kapag masaya kang tao, mas hahaba ang buhay mo. Pero syempre, our life is still depends on God. But anyway, meron po ako mga funny stories na nakita po sa uh, um, sa internet na gusto ko pong i-share sa inyo. Hindi ko lang alam kung baka corny para sa inyo. Pero medyo nakaka-relate ako in some way sa kanila. Kaya rin gusto kong i-share sa inyo. So, hayaan nyo ako mag-joke ng mga joke-joke-joke <laughs> for bago po tayo mag-start. And don't worry, related pa rin siya sa sermon natin for today. So, 
Unang story, meron daw isang pastor. Um, and itong pastor po na ito, meron siyang series on marriage. Parang may pagka-marriage counseling or marriage uh, seminar or ano ba tayo, couples retreat. Yan, yan. So, dun po sa end, nung bago po parang umalis yung mga husband and wife or yung mga couple out of the seminar, meron siyang isang parang giveaway. Sabi niya, Okay, ito, isang wooden cross, sabi niya. And itong wooden cross na ito, ilagay nyo sa mga rooms kung saan madalas kayo mag-away na mag-asawa, sabi niya doon sa mga couples na naroon sa seminar. And then, habang umaalis yung each couple, binibigay niya yung cross. Eh, meron itong isang babae, sabi niya, Pastor, bigyan niyo naman ako ng sampo kasi kailangan na kailangan ko sa madaming kwarto. Joke, joke, joke! <laughs> Alright, meron po daw isang babae na malapit ng ikasal. E medyo low budget siya. So, nag-check siya sa Facebook market ng mga used wedding dresses or mga wedding gown. While scro scrolling, meron siya na isa nakitang isang napakaganda na wedding dress. At ang sabi, wedding dress for sale. Reason for selling, wore once by mistake. Joke, joke, joke! <laughs> meron daw isang, um, recently, meron daw isang mom and dad. Meron daw um, nanay at tatay. Um, tapos medyo social kasi to. So, uh, galit na sa um, medyo western tong pamilyang ito. So, sinend nila yung kanilang uh, anak sa first year niya sa college. So, freshman siya. E eh, kaso, tong anak man nila na ito, medyo pasaway. So, ang ginawa niya, winaldas niya lahat ng pang tuition fee niya. At imbis na mag-aral siya, uh, nag-party-party siya. At ang ending, bagsak lahat ng grades niya or ng mga subjects niya. So, umuwi siya, nakita ng parents, at syempre, napagalitan siya. E dito, yung mga families sa West, parang mahilig sila magbakasyon. So sabi ng nanay sa anak niya, Anak, hindi ka pwedeng sumama ngayon ng, um, kung, um, ng bakasyon natin. Kung gusto mong mag-aral sa next semester, kailangan mo magtrabaho para mag-aral ka. Hindi ko gagastusan yung next na uh, semester mo kasi winaldas mo lang. And so, yung anak na to, nagtrabaho siya for that summer while yung family niya pumunta sa Greece. Wow! Na-miss out niya yon. And then one day, nakatanggap ng postcard itong um, lalaki, itong bata, from his mom. And nakalagay dun sa, um, dun sa postcard. Dear son, today we are here in Greece at the mountains where the Spartan women sacrifice their defective son. I really wish you were here. <laughs> joke, joke, joke! Last na po na kwento ko. Meron daw isang batang, um, isang baby girl, or hindi lang baby girl, um, parang mga nasa elementary na siya na bata. Tapos, medyo pasaway siya. And so, pinani siya. So, habang kumakain sila, Nandun siya sa ibang side ng table. Hindi niya kasama yung mga nanay, tatay at mga kapatid niya. So, yun yung punishment niya. So, habang kumakain sila, walang pumapansin dun sa... Walang kumakausap dun sa bata. Until narinig nilang nagdadasal itong batang ito ng Psalms 23. Alam niyo kung ano sinabi niya? Lord, I thank thee for preparing a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. <laughs> joke, joke, joke. So I'm sure, I want ko sa inyo, pero in some way, nakaka-relate ako sa mga story na to. Alam nyo, it's been a year now na nasa pandemic tayo. And, you know, uh, the World Organization, Health Organization, it's already been a year na dineclare niya na itong but um, itong virus na to has become a pandemic. And simula nung time na yon, inas tayo ng mga government natin, meron tayo mga ECQ, and lahat tayo parang na house arrest. Lahat tayo nakastay na sa bahay, um, yung, hindi na tayo, yung mga estudyante, hindi na pumupunta sa school, online studying na lang. 
Madami sa atin nag-close ng businesses, unfortunately, and they had to do online businesses sa bahay. Iba sa atin nag-work from home. So, madami sa atin ang nakakulong na sa bahay. Well, looking at the brighter side of this situation, I think in some way, ito yung actually one of the positive things na nangyari or brought by this pandemic. You know, it has brought us, um, I mean, it has allowed us to see the brighter or the more important things in life. And isa na nga ito is yung ating family. Bago nag-start tong pandemic na to, hindi tayo nagkakakitaan sa bahay. Alam nyo, naalala ko noon, aalis ako ng before 8am, tas makakauwi ako 11pm na kasi ang daming ganap, ganyan, di ba? So, hindi na tayo nagkakakitaan. And because of this pandemic wherein we're all staying at home, we are now, now beat na natin yung world record natin na manatili sa ating mga bahay. I mean, it's been a year na nakastay tayo sa bahay. And minsan-minsan na lang tayo uh, lumalabas. So, one year na tayong magkakasama as a family. Um, for those independent young adults like me, no, mas madalas na tayong mas nakakatawag sa ating family, sa ating nanay, tatay, or sa mga kapatid natin. Kasi wala na tayong mga boss or mga colleagues. Diba? Nakakahiya tumawag tawag kapag nandun ka sa office. So, at least... One thing na nabigay ng pandemic na to na positive in some way is yun, magkakasama tayo as a family. Well, yung first few months, parang the first month, parang okay. Second month, parang masaya pa. Third month, uh, masaya pa rin naman. Eh pero, six month na. Eighth month na. Alam nyo, nag-start na na magkiskis yung mga character natin at mas nagiging agit tayo sa isa't isa. In fact, meron nga akong isang colleague dito na sabi niya, noon, lagi niyang nami-miss yung kanyang husband and every time na uuwi yung husband niya, parang tuwang-tuwa siya, uh, miss na miss niya, ihahag niya, ikikiss niya. Ngayon, halos sabihin niya sa asawa niya, pwede ba kahit 3 hours lang pumunta tayo sa separate rooms na hindi tayo magkikita. <laughs> so, makikita natin na medyo mas nagkakaroon na ng clash, parang um, mas nagiging napapadalas yung pag-aaway tapos minsan yung mga anak niyo, mga bata lagi na lang nasa room parang hindi na rin nagpapakita dati-dati medyo sama-sama pa kayong mag-dinner, mag-breakfast ngayon kanya-kanya na lang kanya-kanyang luto, kanya-kanyang ano may mga days na baka isang linggo hindi pa kayo nagkita, ah, nandiyan ka pa pala diba? parang ganun na yung nangyayari so today parang gusto ko na-impress po sa akin na i-share sa atin kung paano ba natin na maiwasan ito. And yung topic po natin is a home filled with God's power and peace. So part 1 po ito ng ating pagdidiscuss. Next Sunday mag-share pa po ulit ako. I hope hindi po kayo magsawa. Pero yun po yung na-impress sa akin ni Lord. A home filled with God's power and peace. How do we, um, you know, alam ko, desire natin na magkaroon po ng harmony, ng peace sa ating bahay, na maiwasan natin yung uh, pag-aaway, um, hindi lang sa mag-asawa, pero pati sa mga anak natin, yung mga anak natin, mas maging obedient, di ba? Um, na magkaroon ng mag-manifest talaga yung Holy Spirit sa ating mga tahanan. So, ang topic po natin, or yung sharing natin, would be taken from Colossians 3, verses 12 to 21. So kung baba, usually kapag binabasa po natin tong passage na to, medyo magkahiwalay actually by title tong uh, series um tong um what you call this, tong verses na to. But I do believe that they are actually connected. The first verses, few verses from um 13 to 17 actually gives a context para dun sa succeeding verses na i-discuss ko po sa susunod na linggo which are in verses 18 to 21. So bago po tayo magsimula sa ating discussion, um, hayaan po natin basahin natin po ang salita ng Panginoon mula sa Colossians 13 verses 12 to 21. So sabi po dito, Here there is no gentle or Jew, Circumcised or uncircumcised, 
barbarian, skishan, slave, or free. But Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Wives, submit yourselves to your husband as it is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Blessed be the reading of God's word. So ngayon nga, I'll be sharing to you how do we fill our homes with God's power and peace. Para naman magkaroon ng magmanifest ang presensya ng Panginoon sa ating mga tahanan at para naman magkaroon ng God's peace at harmony sa bawat isa sa relationship natin. So meron po akong five principles uh, na makitake po natin from the passage that we just read. And today, isi-share ko po yung tatlo dito. So ang una-una po, it all begins with desiring to have a Christ-centered family. It begins by having a Christ-centered family. In the epistle to the Colossians na sinulat po ni Apostle Paul, he admonishes them and guide them as they have been arguing whether they must follow the Jewish laws to be called a genuine disciple of Christ. So, nag-aaway-aaway po itong mga um, Gentile believers at yung mga Jewish believers kasi meron mga certain rules and regulations that the Jews follow and sa tingin nila, dapat yung mga Gentiles i-follow din nila kasi um, par- kung gusto nilang maging disciples ni Christ. Pero inadmonish niya na it reminds them that our relationship with Christ is not based on good works or by following laws, traditions, and customs. Chapter 3, verses 2 to 3, Paul says, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ. So, having po a peace or power um, sa, or harmonious relationship po sa ating family, hindi po ito nagsisimula sa pag-create natin ng isang to-do list, or probably a schedule of activities, nor having rules and regulations for the entire family. Instead, it starts by acknowledging who we are and who we should, who should be at the center of our relationship in our family. Sabi po sa verse 11, Here, there is no gentle, Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised. Barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all and is in all. So, hindi po based sa kung sino po ang tatay, sino po ang nanay, who is the man, the woman, sino po ang kuya, sino po ang ate, or sino ang younger brother, sino ang younger sister. Hindi po siya nakabase sa um, sino ang mas nag earn ng mas madami, sino ang mas nag earn ng mas konte, sino yung mas responsible or something else. It's not based on all of this thing. The starting point to having God's peace or experiencing God's peace in our home is for everyone in the family to have a genuine relationship with Christ. So nagsisimula po ito na ang bawat 
membro po ng ating tahanan ay magkaroon ng personal relationship sa Panginoon and acknowledging that we are all God's sons and daughter regardless of your gender of your status of who you are we are all sons and daughters of Christ our homes must be transformed into a Christ-centered home a Christ-centered family so Back in the days po, kapag po nagko-construct po sila ng isang building, meron po silang tinatawag na isang chief cornerstone. So ano po itong chief cornerstone? Ito po yung first stone na nilalagay for a masonry construction. So it, kumbaga sa isang construction, ito po yung foundation. So itong chief cornerstone, ito po yung maging reference nung iba pang mga stone na ginagawa nila. So, di ba dati kasi gawa sa mga stone yung mga bahay. So, kung po mali yung cornerstone na nilagay natin or nilagay nila, magiging mali din po yung mga susunod na mga stones na mailalagay. So, ang ending po nito, either weird tignan, but more importantly, ang mangyari po, pwede pong maghiba yung buong building yung buong bahay. Over time, pwede po itong mag-collapse. Similarly, in the context of a family, we should build our family with, if we build our family with a weak cornerstone, then it is bound to collapse. Kapag po weak yung ating cornerstone, pwede po itong mag-collapse. Saan po ba nakabuild yung ating yung inyong marriage. Where is it built? What are your parenting skills built on? Who or what is the cornerstone of your family? Is it your finances? Is it aiming na ma-promote sa work, na mas matumaas yung inyong sweldo? Is it the achievement of your kids? Or yung mas madaming medal, ganyan? Is it being able to follow po yung mga certain traditions natin? Or is it our having a good health? Doon po ba nakabuild ang ating pamilya? As we have seen during this pandemic po, a lot of these things have collapsed. We should make Christ as our chief cornerstone po ng ating family. He should be the Lord of our family. You know, Jesus tells us of a story wherein if we build our lives on the sand and when the waves of life come rushing in, magko-collapse po ito. You know, you can build your life, your family, your relationship on shallow and empty promises or you can build your life on the promises of God. Pwede po nating i-build yung ating pamilya, you know, sa mga material things, probably sa good health. I mean, I'm not saying po that those things are not important, but it shouldn't be the chief cornerstone of our family. The chief cornerstone of our family should be our genuine relationship with Christ the promise of salvation of Christ. Kasi po, when the waves of life come rushing in, just like this pandemic that we are facing in, everything around us could collapse. But definitely, the promises of God, yung assurance that God will be there, would remain intact. And kung dun po naka-anchor yung family natin, kung dun po naka-anchor yung bawat isa, then surely, even if ma-destroy po ang anything around us, yung pamilya din natin solid. Yung pamilya pa rin natin buo. Yung pamilya pa rin natin magmamanifest yung presensya niya at magkakaroon po ng peace sa bawat isa. At more importantly, sa ating buong pamilya. At ang kagandahan nito, hindi lang magre-remain yung peace sa loob ng tahanan natin. Pero maaari nating i Manifest pa ito sa ating mga kapitbahay, sa extended families natin, 
ngayon na meron tayong mga Zoom, no? Pwede tayo mag-Skype, mag-Messenger call, or mag-Zoom call. Pwede natin makikita po nila na yung intact pa rin tayo despite all the turmoil happening around us. So yeah, yun po ang udang principle natin. As the chief cornerstone po, we follow or model and reference our life in Christ. So, how do we fill our homes? It starts by having a Christ-centered family. And we can do that by making Christ as our cornerstone. And it means that when we make Christ as our cornerstone, sa kanya po naka-reference yung ating buhay. As a family, sa kanya po natin binibase or minomodel, you know, yung husband or yung wives or yung children, as the man, as the woman, si Lord po yung parang basis natin on how we act, on how we behave, on how we do things, on where we get our hope, on where we get our joy, on where we get our, you know, yung ating obedience and all of this. So dun po natin imomodel. So, dun po sa mga susunod na talata, it says that, Therefore, as God's chosen, chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So, we are to clothe ourselves with Christ-like attitude or cross ourselves with Christ-like character. Kasi nga sabi natin, ire-reference natin yung buhay natin, yung family natin kay Christ, di ba? And I believe that the succeeding verse tells us kung ano yung paano natin imo-model yung buhay natin or yung family natin kay Christ. I think hindi po nang hula-hula lang or random lang yung binigay ni Apostle Paul nung sinulat niya tong epistle na to. I believe that out of all po the characters, Paul uh, intentionally picked ito pong limang characters na ito for a reason. So, I would like to call it the five ingredients to having a healthy family relationship. Alam ko po na today, usong-uso po ang pagiging plantito, plantita, at isa pa po sa usong-uso ngayon ay nag-hype ang pagluluto kasi walang magawa ang mga tao pero ingat lang po ang mag-social distancing po tayo sa ref kasi baka matulad po kayo sa akin na medyo nagigain ng weight ang hirap-hirap tuloy mag -lose. grabe kailangan mag-exercise and everything pero ang dali-daling ipasok but yeah, so kaya ko po gustong sabihin ano po ba ang recipe natin on having a healthy family relationship so binigay po sa atin ni Apostle Paul limang ingredients on how we accomplish that. So, una po, compassion. So, sabi po sa um, Webster's Dictionary or sa online dictionary, it compassion is defined as a sympathetic consciousness of others' distress together with a desire to alle alleviate it. So, ang keyword po dito is sympathy. So, compassion involves sympathy. And it is, the, um, it is the ability or the character of being able po na makiramdam po sa nararamdaman ng iba. Kung meron pong nalulungkot, if you are sympathetic, you're able to feel the yung sadness or yung joy, yung victory. Nakakasympathize ka po sa taong ito or nakaka-relate ka po. You are able to put yourself in their shoes. You know, with compassion, you would have the initiative to help your parents kapag ka alam mong pagod na pagod na sila at wala ka namang ginagawa, di ba? Kapag ka meron kang compassion and you have the sympathy, you're able to have the initiative to help sa mga gawaing bahay. If you are, as a parent, kapag ka meron kang compassion or sympathy, you're able to understand kung minsan yung anak mo medyo um, laging tulog kasi pagod na pagod siya sa dami ng modules na kanyang inaaral. And you're also able to encourage them instead, no? Na instead of pagalitan sila, encourage them to do better 
and help them because you know that they are burned out from studying. You know, if you are with compassion, you would have the passion to hug, kiss, or serve your parents after a long, tiring day at work. Compassion allows us to build connections inside the family by being able to feel what each one is feeling. Yung bang hindi ka na lang nakafocus sa sarili mo, sa nararamdaman mo, but you're able to understand kung ano man yung pinagdadaanan ng bawat isa. Kung anong pinagdadaanan ng asawa mo, anong pinagdadaanan ng mga anak mo, ano man yung pinagdadaanan ng mga kapatid mo, ano man pinagdadaanan ng mga parents mo, or ng mga kasama mo sa bahay or sa family niyo. So, without connect, compassion, magiging kanya-kanya na lang tayo. Without compassion, there is no connection with each member of the family. And that goes away to the original design, yung reference natin na cornerstone for the family. So isa sa chief corner, kapag ka, ginawa natin si Jesus Christ as our cornerstone, ang unang ingredient to having a healthy, strong family relationship is really having compassion. Kasi ito yung magbubuklod sa ating lahat. Magbibuild ng connection kasi mas nararamdaman natin ang bawat isa. Alright, down to our first ingredient. Wow, parang cooking show eh. Next, next po na ating um, um, ingredient is kindness. So, it says po sa Galatians 6 verse 8, A man reaps what he sows. So, if you plant kindness, then you will also reap kindness. If you do good to a family member, then you will also reap goodness po. Pero kapag ang plinaplant mo, galit, masasamang salita, irritable ka lagi, foul languages, pagkatamaran or laziness, ang tinatamin mo, puro jealousy, then you will also reap the same things, no? So kung ano yung tinanim mo, yun ang din ang aanihin mo. So mag-ingat po tayo. So, sinasabi po ni Paul that we should have, we should plant kindness po sa bawat isa. Kindness involves initiative and is motivated by love. You know, tum tumutulong po tayo sa mga gawain bahay or nakikinig tayo sa ating asawa, uh, fina-follow natin yung parents natin or Um, nire-respeto natin yung ibang mga tao, hindi dahil sa merong incentive. Hindi dahil sa meron tayong makukuha. Pero kindness, if meron tayo doon, motivation natin is because of love. We do things not out of reward, but we do it because we love. You love your spouse, You love your children, you love your parents, you love your siblings. So yun po, kapag ka meron tayong kindness, we are able to be motivated by love. At wala po tayong ina-ask in return. So yun po ang next na ingredient. So we have compassion and next po, kindness. Ang third ingredient po natin is humility. Humility is... Um, in simplest sense, the ability to consider others ahead of oneself. It has been said that a humble person does not think less of himself. He simply thinks uh, he simply thinks of himself less. So po, ang pagiging, hum ang pagiging humble po or having humility, it doesn't mean na mababa po ang tingin natin sa sarili natin. Pero iniisip po natin yung iba kaysa sa kapakanan natin. Mas iniisip natin yung iba kaysa sa sarili natin. Pero it doesn't mean na wala po tayong self-confidence. Kasi sabi po sa 2 Timothy verses 1 to verse 7, We have not been given the spirit of fear and timidity, but gives us power, love, and discipline. So ang pagiging humble po, it doesn't mean wala po kayong self-confidence. ha Ang pagiging humble po, Hindi po doon nabibase sa pagiging shy, 
oh, hindi ka nagsasalita, ganyan. Hindi po doon nakabase. Kapag po pagiging humble is mas iniisip mo yung, example, yung asawa mo, mas kaysa sa sarili mo. Inisip mo, kumain na ba yung mga anak ko bago sa sarili mo? Iniisip mo din na, oops, kuma, um, baka pagod na, po, pagod na si mami, si daddy, um, tulungan ko nga din sila. Oops, bakit kaya ako napagalitan? Siguro meron akong nagawang kasalanan. Hindi ka magagalit agad kasi you're humble. Humility enables us to listen to our family's needs instead of always being focused to ourselves. And surely, that will provide us peace and harmony po sa ating pamilya. Kapag mas iniuna natin na, kasi kapag ka selfish tayo, lagi na lang natin ini iniisip yung sarili natin, it would really cause clash. It would really cause, um, you know, um, yung bang mga um, conflict sa ating family. Humility enable, enables us to not become arrogant or self-centered, but it allows us to exercise respect sa bawat isa. You know, hin kapag humble ka, hindi ka mabilis magalit. Kapag humble ka, mas ma-prioritize mo yung ibang tao. And we, when we do that all together, wow, I'm sure mas magiging strong and peaceful ang family nyo. So yun po yung third ingredient. So we have compassion, we have kindness, and we have humility. Ang fourth ingredient po natin is we have gentleness. Gentleness is basically everyone in our family have their own flaws and shortcomings. So, ang bawat isa po natin sa pamilya natin, huwag po natin kakalimutan that all of us, meron po tayong mga flaws. Hindi po tayo perfect. And surely, meron po tayong magagawang mga kasalanan. And as a family, we are here to help in carving out each one's flaws in our character to become more Christ-like. So, since la as a family, alam mas alam po natin yung um, parang weaknesses or yung mga flaws natin, we are the perfect people to be able to correct those flaws. To be able to, minsan kapag tatamad-tamad yung anak mo, edi ikakorek mo sila, di ba? O kaya kapag yung parents mo medyo madalas mag-away, medyo ma hindi maganda yung magsalita, mainitin masyado ang ulo, di pwede mo rin silang i-rebuke or i-correct. Pero ang gentleness is a key to be able to do that correction effectively. Gentleness is a strong hand with a soft touch. Alam nyo, kapag ka, sabi nyo, ayusin mo nga yan. Ano yan? Ang gulo-gulo. Diba parang patusok? Parang patalim? Parang lalo ka pang maiinis? Pero kapag sinabi mo, o oh, mga anak, parang medyo mukhang babuyan tong room natin ngayon na baka naman mas okay kung ayusin natin para mas maaliwalas. Diba? Kapag ka yung tono natin, yung how we say it, ha, how we deliver it, and more importantly, when we walk the talk, when we are gentle, then mas maganda po yung flow, no correction natin. Mas magan harmonious po. Pero kapag ka yung pananalita natin, lagi mo na lang hinahiram at sinisira yung mga gamit mo. Kapag sinabi mo sa kapatid mong ganyan, di away na yan, gulo na agad ang mangyayari. Pero kapag ang sinabi mo, uy, parang uh, ginamit mo to pero nasira, pwede bang okay sa next time, uh, mas i-take care mo yung gamit na hiramin mo? Uh, and for sure, kapag ako din, hiniram ko yung gamit mo, I will take care of it too. So dapat, mas maging gentle tayo sa ating pananalita. So, isa ulit yan sa ingredient. The fourth ingredient. So, una, compassion. Pangalawa, kindness. Pangatlo, humility. Pangapat, gentleness. And down to our fifth ingredient to complete it. Oh, wait. Meron pa ba lang truth doon bago ako pumunta doon? A gentle person still speaks truth. So, hindi mo namang uutuituhin yung kasama mo. Hindi po yun ang gentleness or yung kapamilya mo. Pero you are able to say even painful truth but in doing so guards his tone so the truth can be well received. Yun nga po yun. And sabi dito sa Philippians 4.5 Let your gentleness be evident to all. 
And last nga, ang fifth ingredient po natin is patience. Ay, nako, kailangan po talaga yan. Sabi dito, James 3.2, we all stumble in many ways. So, sabi ko nga, madami tayong flaws and weaknesses sa buong family po natin. And it is bound na meron po sa atin magkakamali. Meron po sa atin na makakagawa ng something na medyo nakaka-irita, nakaka-sakit po. Pero kasi nga, we all stumble in many ways. Patience, basically, is to avoid the conflicts and frictions. Alam nyo, sa isa pong makinas ng sasakyan, meron po sila tinatawag na yung oil, di ba? yung engine oil. And importante po tong engine oil, kasi kung naubos po tong engine oil or wala pong engine oil, magkakaskas po yung ating makina. And magkukos po siya ng major damage and even accident. Kasi possible po na sa sobrang friction, maging mag-emit to ng fire at mag-explode pa yung makina nyo. Habang nasa highway kayo nagda-drive, it could cause really serious damage. And similarly po, itong patience na to is like that engine oil. It is used to avoid conflicts and frictions that could cause an explosion of anger. Nakapagka ikaw na sobrang galit, di ba? Didilim ang panglingin mo. Madami po na mga murder cases are due to anger po. Are due to, you know, assault cases dahil po sa anger. Or madami po sa split or divorce or annulment or, you know, uh, paglalayas ng mga anak. is because out of your anger, nakapagsalita ka ng napakasakit na mga salita. Nakapagbitiw ka ng mga curses na hindi talaga dapat. So, kapag po meron tayong patience, we can avoid such things. So, patience is revealed in the long-suffering, slow-to-anger attitude God generously displays towards us. So po, itong patience na to, ang role model po ulit natin is si God. Alam nyo, sa dami-dami ng ginagawa natin na kasalanan, napaka-patient pa rin si Lord sa atin. Lagi niya pa rin tayong You know, sinusubayan, hindi niya tayo iniiwan. Hindi niya tayo, alam niyo, buti sa Old Testament, kapag may ginawa ka lang, patay ka na agad. <laughs> buti na lang, wala tayo sa Old Testament, di ba? Napaka-patient talaga ni Lord sa atin. And similarly, dun po natin imomodel yung attitude natin sa pamilya. Mas maging patient pa po tayo, knowing na bawat isa sa atin, bound talaga na magkamali. So, alam niyo yun, huwag kayong... Mabilis mairita, mabilis na magalit, but be patient. And surely, if we have patient, there is harmony and magmamanifest po. So yun po yung limang ingredients po, no? Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Pero alam nyo, just like any sikat po na recipe, my secret ingredients. And it today is your blessed day because I'm gonna share to you the secret ingredient to having a healthy, peaceful, strong family. Excited na ba kayo? And this would be the third point po na gusto ko pong i-share sa inyo ngayon. It is to choose love over hate. To choose love over hate. When we have asked Jesus Christ to be our Savior and to be the Lord of our lives, then His character should manifest in our words, in our actions, and in our life. Kaso nga, nandito pa rin tayo sa mundo, and so, yung sinful nature natin, nagkakaroon pa rin tayo ng struggle. Pero the good news is that, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us, as stated in 1 John 1, 8-9. Sabi dito, If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves, and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our wicked ways. Alam nyo, napakadali po na magpatawad or maglove po sa mga taong lovable. <laughs> Di ba kapag ka walang kamali, hindi kayo masyado nagkikita, okay lang. Madali lang maglove when everything is good, it's pleasing to our eyes, okay siya sa ating paningin. Madaling i-love ito. Pero, sa isang family po who lives in a home 
24/7 na hindi pa natin sila ma-choose, 'di ba? Wala tayong choice kasama natin sila. We are bound to see the ugly things or the ugly side of each and every one. Kapag po nasa tahanan na tayo, doon na po natin nakikita ang tunay na anyo. Nagbigla tayo nagmo-morph sa real self natin kasi kapag nasa labas Yeah, prim and proper, respectful, pero kapag nasa bahay na OMG, kahit bagong gising, kahit na umutot lang siya, di ba? <laughs> okay lang, which, which is part of the fun and everything. But sometimes, the ugly things really come out. And this makes it even more challenging to show compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Di ba? Yung limang ingredient natin, ang hilap na i-apply. Kapag ka nakikita natin yung ugly side of each other. Pero sabi dito sa succeeding verse, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. So I know na hindi po accident na talaga pong isinigunda ni, ni Paul itong succeeding verses na to after niya sabihin magkaroon tayo ng mga compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Alam niya mahirap itong gawin. Pero ano yung secret ingredient and secret weapon natin? We are to apply the unconditional love of God who chose to forgive us despite all our shortcomings, all our mess. Lahat po ng pagkakamali natin at lahat po ng kasalanan natin. He, chose, he still chose to love us. Yung love po, hindi lang po ito basta-bastang feeling. Love is not just, oh, I feel like loving you today. Because it's Monday. <laughs> Whatever. I feel like loving you today kasi masarap yung niluto mo. I feel like loving you today kasi sumunod ka sa akin. I feel like loving you today, mama and papa, kasi may kailangan ako sa inyo. Kailangan ko ng baon or ng allowance. Hindi po ganun yun. Hindi po yun yung love. Love is the power of God that has the capacity to bind all godliness together in a divine perfection. So, meron po tayong story sa uh, Matthew 18 verses 21 to 35 about an unforgiving debtor. So, dito po, meron daw pong isang hari na chinek niya lahat, nagkaroon siya ng parang audit ng kanyang mga accounts or ng kanyang mga ari-arian. And dun sa audit niya, nalaman niya na yung servant niya owes him millions. Super dami po ng utang niya. So sabi niya, Oy, kailangan mong bayaran tong utang mo or else uh, mapupunta ka and your entire family sa prison. So, eh, walang pera itong servant niya na to. So, ay, hindi. Pupunta ka ngayon pati yung pamilya niya sa prison. So, syempre, nagbakaawa siya. Oh, king, King, please, um, uh, Bigyan niya po, po ako ng time. Bigyan niya po, po ako ng time para makabayad. Maawa po kayo sa atin. etong king na to, maawain siya. Super maawain siya. And so sabi niya, naawa naman siya dun sa servant niya. Alright, sige. Hayaan mo na. Madami pa naman akong ari-arian. It's okay. Go and you're free. Hindi na kita ipapakulong. Wow, ba diba? Napalaya. So sobrang tuwang-tuwa itong... Um, itong servant na to na yung million sa na kanyang utang ni let go hindi niya na kailangan bayaran hindi pa yung bayaran mo by parang installment hindi ganon as in free wala na siyang babayaran so sobrang tuwa niya nung pagkalabas niya bigla niya nakita yung kanyang kasamahan sa eh yung kasamahan niya nito may utang din sa kanya pinuntahan niya hoy yung utang mo sa akin, bayaran mo. Eh, kon- ilang libo lang yon Siguro mga, tabi mo na, 10,000, ganyan. Konti, compare. Eh, tapos sabi niya, hindi, magbayad ka. Eh, walang pambayad din tong kasamahan niya kasi gipit na gipit din. So, wala siyang maipangbayad. So, ang ginawa niya, ay, hindi, bayaran mo yan. So, pinakulong niya yung servant niya na, itong kasamahan niya to. 
eh nalaman nung hari kung ano yung ginawa niya, di ba? So, sas, nagkalit ngayon yung hari, ano ba yan? After kong i, hindi pa bayad sa yung millions of dollars, ito ka, konti lang yung utang ng kasama mo, pinaprison mo. Ngayon, pumu- ipunta yan sa prison at itorture niya yan until makapagbayad siya. And sabi ni Jesus Christ dun sa succeeding verses as how he ended that, that's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Wow, di ba? We are commanded to forgive seven times, not only seven times, but 70 times seven. Hindi ko po alam kung ano yung uh, i-compute yun, pero wag na po kayong magbilang. Hindi po yun yung point ni Lord na dapat this number of um, times or counts lang tayo pwedeng mag patawad. Ang gusto po ng Panginoon ituro sa atin na you know, nagkasala um, um, example, nakita mo ang dumi-dumi ng bahay, tapos nakahiga lang sila doon. Linisan mo anyway. Nakita mo, parang um, pinagalitan ka. Follow, unreasonably. Follow anyway. Nakita mo, Parang hiniram yung damit mo, sinoli sa'yo. Sira-sira na ng kapatid mo. Diba sinoli niya? Love them anyway. Why? Because God gave us the same thing. He loved us even during the times when we were a mess. When we were still sinners, minahal niya pa rin tayo. At anong ginawa niya? Sinelebrate lang natin last time, yung Holy Week at yung Easter Sunday. He sent His only begotten Son for Him to die on the cross. Wow, di ba? Nag-suffer siya. Para kanino? Sa atin na makasalanan. Sa atin na brini-break yung heart niya. When your child fails a test despite of his or her effort, choose love and not hate. If your parents got mad easily since they are busy and tired, choose love and not hate. When your siblings bring back your items na sira-sira, choose love and not hate. Sabi po sa um, dito, sabi po sa Ephesians 4 verses 26 to 27, Anger and unforgiveness opens a door for sin to enter our life and give a foothold for the enemy in our heart. Alam nyo, kapag po tayo laging may galit sa puso natin, entry point po yun ng kaaway. So wag po natin hahayaan na magkaroon po ng unforgiving heart sa puso natin, sa pamilya natin. Wag po natin hahayaan na magkaroon ng control ang kasalanan sa ating pamilya. Do not allow the power of the enemy to manifest himself sa buhay natin, sa pamilya natin. And we are able to manifest his power and his peace to reign in our lives when we allow love and forgiveness to dwell in each and every one of us. And this love and forgiveness comes from the overflowing gratefulness attitude that we have because of the love and forgiveness that we have received from our Father. That even before we were sinners, He chose to love us. So how do we fill our homes with God's power and peace? Una po, kailangan magkaroon ng Christ-centered family. Gawin po natin cornerstone ang ating Panginoon. We have to, as we follow Him and make Him the cornerstone, we clothe yourself with Christ's character. And ang secret ingredient po natin is to choose love over hate. In Ephesians 1 verse 6, sabi niya, God decided in advance to adopt us into His own family by bringing us to Himself through Jesus Christ. This is what He wanted to do and it gave Him great pleasure. You know, it is an honor it is a privilege that we are all adopted 
into God's family. So yung pamilya po ninyo, hindi lang po yan isang pamilya, whatever your family name is, hindi lang po siya kapuyan family. We are all part of God's family. And we should act and mother ourselves na ganun din po, na ang parent natin is si Father God, na brother natin si Jesus Christ. And together, yung mga kasama natin sa pamilya natin are our brothers and sisters in Christ. As a family, gusto niyo po ba ng power and peace of God to reign in your life? It starts with a genuine relationship with Him. The Lord is inviting all of you to be part of His great family. And it starts by accepting Him as our Lord and personal Savior. And hindi po mahirap tong gawin. He, we just need to pray, ask for forgiveness, and acknowledge Him as our Lord and Savior. So, anayahan ko po kayo sa isang panalangin. Lord, salamat po sa inyong salita. Truly, Father God, You are our Abba Father. You are our loving Father. Na even before nung mag may kasalanan pa kami, before we were even so sinners, You already gave Your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to save each and every one of us. Lord, gusto ko po na yung family namin ay maging Christ-centered, na maging peaceful po, maging harmonious. And we know that we cannot do it without You at the center of our family. So Lord, bumababa po kami. We humble ourselves and allow You to become our Lord and Savior. Maging hari po kayo sa aming puso. Maging hari po kayo sa aming buhay. Maging hari po kayo sa aming pamilya. And let Your power manifest in our lives and in our family. And Lord, salamat po. And may our lives continue to be directed and molded in your image. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. So yun po, meron po tayong tatlong uh, keys on how to have the power and um, peace of God in our um, in our family. Sana po, samahan niyo ulit po ako next Sunday as I share to you some more principles for you to have a peaceful and harmonious family. Salamat po ulit and stay safe and God bless. you have rescued me. Say it out, Jesus is alive. Finally we'll see, celebrate